Jazak Allah khairan. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome on behalf of the Federation of Pakistan Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I am Sidra Iqbal, and it is my honor to once again welcome you to the Avani Sadr and be hosting this uh, wonderful evening tonight. There was once a magnificent emperor who sought the guidance and advice of a wise man and gave him a task to give him some advice that would bring a smile on his face and lift his spirits in tough times but the same advice should humble him in wonderful times. The wise man paused and smiled and responded with, this too shall pass. Ye vakht bhi guzar jayega. When we look at our, our commerce and industry, the traders, the movers and shakers of the Pakistani economy, they have seen all kinds of tides. They have seen tough times and they have team, seen wonderful times. But what really inspires them is to continue striving for excellence. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the Federation of Pakistan Chambers of Commerce and Industry, the EPICS body of trade, industry, and services in Pakistan, with, uh, with, with about 278 trade bodies operating under it, is going to acknowledge and accredit and encourage these wonderful organizations and individuals who have been committed to excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to formally begin the evening with the welcome remarks of the Honorable President of the FBCCI. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Atif Ikram Sheikh. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim His Excellency Mr. Asif Ali Zardari, Honorable President, Islamic Republic of Pakistan, Mr. Gaur Ejaz, Federal Minister for Commerce and Patron in Chief Aptima, Mr. Asim Tanvir, former Provincial Minister and Patron in Chief, United Business Group, Mr. Saqib Fiyaz Magu, Senior Vice President, FPCCI and Chairman, FPCCI Award Committee, Distinguished Award winners, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum and congratulations. In fact, this is a memorable moment in my life and I am proud to be speaking in the presence of the President of Islamic Republic of Pakistan. Honorable President, you have set an example of leadership. The business community of Pakistan is highly admiring of excellency, dynamic leadership, and I am deeply grateful to the Honorable President that your presence graced this event. Ladies and gentlemen, whenever the business community of Pakistan requested to the Honorable President to grace functions, the Excellency always encourage and brighten our, our events. Today, FPCC Excellent Awards is not just a name of an award, but it's a testament to the lifelong efforts and outstanding achievements of the awardees. The FPCCI is recognizes the, your contribution by distributing this award from the hands of the most beloved president of Pakistan. Ladies and gentlemen, economic challenges have now turned into a great opportunities for business and investments. And being the president of FPCCI, my responsibilities include keeping an eye of the international situations, the change taking place in the region and opportunities, and to continue my effort to increase the economic and commercial relation of Pakistan. For this very objective, we have seen that the SCO is currently developing rapidly into a newly emerging political, diplomatic, economical, and trade blocks. Pakistan is also a member of SCO countries where China, Russia, Iran, Central Asia countries are also present and we are also working on the CPAC project in the collaboration with China. So considering the opportunities, the FPCCI has successfully organized a business and investment conference of these countries in Islamabad last month. FPCCI FCO conference highlighted the positive image of Pakistan as a business friendly nation all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we are well aware global world is changing very fast at this time. 
Now strong and stable economies are rapidly growing towards ruling the world. And those nations which are behind in the field of the economic development in the use of technology are not getting a better position in the world. I believe that we should prove, improve technological skill and enhance the trade through the support of modern technology. We have to find opportunities in different economic and commercial blocks in order to improve the socio-economic relations, strong integrations, communications needs to be improved. We need to keep an eye on other regions besides our own to see what opportunities are they have. Ladies and gentlemen, although the country is on the path of economic development but faces difficulties due to the complexities, constraints, inconsistencies of policies, I believe that finding a path to the prosperity of Pakistan requires a multi-pronged approach. Pakistan business community wants to be given a long road, road map that defines all future targets and goals. And there should be constant continuity and consistency in the policies. I believe that the confidence by consulting us, you will see how our targets are not achieved. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very confident that at present the patronage of Honorable President is there who will surely guide us to provide the best opportunity for the trade industry and business. Before concluding, I would like to thank His Excellency Mr. Asif Ali Zardari, the Honorable Pre President of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, for gracing the FPCCI Excellent Award Ceremony more dignified by his presence. Once again, I offer my heartfelt congratulations to FPCCI Excellent Award winners. I am also thankful to the excellent support and cooperation from the staff of the Presidency. I also thank to the FPCCI Award Committee, my colleagues and other tireless service in making this event uh, successful. I appreciate the day and night efforts of the FPCCI Secretariat under Brigadier Opal, Secretary General, our coordinator Malik Soil and Fogel person for organizing this successful event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ikram Sahab, and Akef, of course, very graciously, you've also acknowledged the team at FBCCI, who's worked diligently day and night to make these awards a success. And uh, we must acknowledge the chairman of the awards committee. We must also acknowledge the secretary general of FBCCI, Brigadier Iftikhar Opal, and of course, the chairman of the coordination at FBCCI, Malik Suhail Hussain Sahab. Ladies and gentlemen, excellence requires commitment. And of course, when it comes to resilience, our business community has shown the kind of grit that is exemplary to the world. And of course, we have the patronage of the Honorable President, who's lauded around the world as a champion of resilience and reconciliation. Ladies and gentlemen, as we wave through these very tough times and still try to carve out the opportunities, we must hear from the business community about their concerns and of course their suggestions. May I now take this opportunity to invite our next speaker. He of course is the chairman of the FPCCI think tank, a former federal minister. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Gohar Ejaz, Hilal Emtiaz, Sitara Emtiaz, Pakistan. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. His Excellency, the President of Pakistan, the Honorable Ministers, Honorable Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. We all know that Pakistan has had a very turbulent two and a half years economic challenge. Our currency, which was at 125 rupees, devalued to 280. Our interest rates, which were at 7%, rose to 22%. Our 
our taxation structures, which were stringent by any definition, became impossible and came to the point that uh, the service sector had to be taxed to the extent of 40 and 45 percent. The agriculture sector has also been now taxed. The real estate sector has been taxed. We believe Pakistan has shown that the business community will sustain and survive and will continue to stand with Pakistan no matter what the conditions are. And we can see in last year, there has been no devaluation. We can see in last one year, stability coming back to Pakistan. We can see in last one year that the country which was posting current account, which posted a current account deficit of $20 billion plus in 22, we posted a, a nominal current account deficit less than a billion dollars. So Pakistan is ready to take off again after this two and a half years of economic battling by the business community of Pakistan and the government of Pakistan. And so, when we stand here today, we again say that today the biggest issues of our economy are energy prices, our interest rates, our taxation policy, which still stands, all these points still there. Energy policy, if I talk on behalf of the industry, we are at 16 cents per unit. When people say that this increase has taken place because of devaluation, I'm not talking in terms of rupees, I'm talking in terms of dollar. We are at 16 cents per unit. Internationally, regionally, the rates are eight to nine cents. Our industries have to compete with the region. Our industries have to compete with the world because the only way for Pakistan to develop further is export. So the way to grow for Pakistan is export. You have always supported. I remember coming here in 2011, and I remember that you had given us a task at that time to touch $25 billion of exports in 2013. And I remember that after touching $25 billion, out of which $13 billion was textiles, you had honored all of us here in this room in 2013 and celebrated with us $25 billion mark. So even after 11 years today, last year we were standing at $27.5 billion. I was given the charge of Commerce Ministry. I looked at the numbers and I said, out of $27.5 billion of exports, our manufacturing exports, which was major textiles, was 16 and a half. Our manufacturing exports, other than textiles from Pakistan, was only $5 billion, and our agriculture was 5 This is how we were at $27 billion. Look at it, textiles, 16 and a half. All other manufacturing from all of Pakistan, 250 million people, 5 billion, and agriculture, 5. I looked at it. I met everybody and they said, we have no opportunity to grow exports in neither textiles nor manufacturing. I had a target that we have to grow by 10%. I went back to the basics, which the president had taught me, agriculture. We marketed agriculture. We opened doors, just opened doors. We just branded Pakistan. And we got, because of the business community, because of their efforts, we got 60% increase only in agriculture. From $5 billion, agriculture increased by $3 billion, which netted it as a 10% growth in export, but without manufacturing sector's contribution. So I believe that if we, if 10 years ago we would have followed 10% growth, just 10% growth, $25 billion, we touched 25 when we celebrated. Today we would have been at $80 billion just 10% year-on-year growth. We have lost 11 years. These currency devaluations take place because we don't have export surpluses. 
these currency devaluations take place because our economy is hungry for dollars and dollars can only be earned through exports. And here today, sir, we are fighting this battle with IPPs because we know that no subsidies can be given. So everybody has to put the belt in order. So economic policy think tank is, is doing its effort and the first point was interest in getting the problem sorted out. And we at Federation, we at Economic Think Tank have taken this task. And sir, you'll be surprised, I give you the number again. One trillion rupee, one trillion rupee is being paid to IPPs without producing a single unit of electricity. I don't say that we must, we, we, should, we should take any drastic specs, but we should only pay for what we are buying, we should not be paying for what we are not buying. We can't cripple the country. The country has a great future. It's 250 million people. Sir, I see. If you give me 10% interest rates, and you give me 16 cents electricity, I still cannot perform. I can only perform if you give me a single digit interest rate and you give me a single digit electricity tariff. And that's the only way forward, 9% and 9%. Sir, <laughs> so, the think tank has worked on, on Pakistan's uh, financial debt position domestically. I know that's your favorite subject. Sir, on 30th September 24, Pakistan's domestic debt is 48 trillion rupee. And we are paying today an interest of 17.5% on that as a policy rate. So 80% of the amount has been borrowed from the banking sector by the government of Pakistan. And the reason to take the interest rates from 7 to 22 was that we had a contract, an agreement with IMF that we will have positive interest rates in our country, which meant that interest rates had to be higher than the inflation. And because of the devaluation which took place in last two and a half years, inflation was even touching 30% year on year. But it was because of the dollar. In last year when the dollar has been constant, today, September to September, the, in, the total inflation year on year is 6.9%. It's not that the inflation has gone down. It is that the inflation has stopped going up it's gone up by 6.9%. So it is actually the imported, imported inflation which comes into the country because of the currency devaluation. When the currency has been stable, now if the inflation year on year as per agreement with IMF is 6.9, my question is, why are we holding the interest rates at 17 and a half? Why is the government paying 11% higher than the inflation rate and then charging the people of Pakistan that money and asking them to pay taxes to pay that amount. So the whole circle has to be, there has to be structured in a manner which is, which is beneficial for the people of Pakistan. So people are strangled because of taxation. The interest rates have gone down by 5% in the last three months after the budget. So my, my point of view here is, that this 5% on 48 trillion rupees is 2.4 trillion rupees. Sir, first quarter has entered. Our agreement is signed. We must give relief to the salaried class people as a first step, sir, because they are the people who are going to drive the domestic economy. And when they drive the domestic economy, we will have taxation again coming back. Sir, the manufacturing is running at less than 50%. The, we will be only viable, sir, when our domestic consumption is higher. Sir, we pledge to you today, sir, that our exports can touch $100 billion in five years if you give us a level playing field at par with the region. And I'm only demanding nine and nine and I'm only demanding what is doable. I don't, I don't believe that we can give subsidies and we don't believe in subsidies. We must implement, we must implement the policy which, 
and our agreements, but we must put the house in order. And the house in order for interest rate is nine, and the house in order is to get the IPP agreements back in place for energy to be paid for what is produced, that is taken pay. So, $100 billion was your dream. I'm here with that dream. I'm here with that dream, and we want this dream to be a dream of every Pakistani. We want this dream to be a dream of 250 million of Pakistan, that we want to be a $100 billion export economy in five years. So, solution is export-led growth. Each one of us believe we can do it. Each one of us is committed to our country. Each one of us believe that today we are a $350 billion economy. Each one of us believe that we can be a $1 trillion economy in less than 10 years. So, <laughs> so we are 250 million people. We are the fifth largest population of the world. So, you have taught me to dream. I'm a dreamer, but I am also a believer. So, my dream is this country should be the fifth largest economy of the, country, of the world. We are the fifth largest population. We have to be the fifth largest economy of the world, and we deserve it. So, we need you to be guiding us. We need you to hold our hand. We need you to take us forward to make this dream a reality. Mr. President, today we have representatives here from Karachi to Gilgit, Baltistan. We have the presidents of all chambers. So we have 39 divisions, and all chamber presidents are here. One, 60, one city has, say for Karachi, we have more than 20 MNAs, but we have only one chamber president. In Lahore, we have 16 MNAs, but we have only one chamber president. So this is what is from Karachi till Gilgit. We are all here today. We are all here pledging our loyalty to Pakistan. <laughs> so, Pakistan's 39 divisions all have to be part of our economic development. Each one of the divisions, we are there. We are there to be part of this dream. And this dream will only become a reality when we will all become part and be inclusive to make this dream a reality. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Gohar Ejaz. Um, indeed, you spoke for all of us when you spoke about the dream that Pakistan has, not just the macros, but also the micros, where it actually has meaning for people's homes, for their neighborhoods, for their children as they go to school, as their loved ones reach out to the hospitals. It's about everyone, creating more opportunities, creating more jobs, so the prosperity can be shared. Ladies and gentlemen, as we commit ourselves to this dream and to excellence, it gives us great pride to now present to you the first of its kind, the maiden FPCCI Excellence Awards. May we request His Excellency, the President of Pakistan, Mr. Asif Ali Zardai, to please step forward, sir, and present this. May I also request Mr. Atif Ikram Ash Ashik and Dr. Gohar Ajaz to please accompany the Honorable Chief Guest to give away the awards tonight. As Dr. Gohar Ejaz has alluded, we have guests and recipients and exilers from all across the country. Ladies and gentlemen, there are 25 uh, organizational categories that we are tonight presenting our excellence awards in. First and foremost, FPCCI is pleased to announce the best Hospital of the Year Excellence Awards. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to acknowledge the Aga Khan University Hospital. May we request Sayyid Fahad Abbas Naqvi, the Chief Executive Officer of the Aal Khan University Hospital, to please accept this.
AKU's cutting edge research, innovation, and practices address critical issues in, in the country, and they truly are a pride for the country. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, the best tea brand company of the year, Excellence Awards. This, of course, is uh, you know, a company that also calls it the nationality. Please welcome to Palti. May we request Mr. Mohammad Asif, the General Manager, Business Unit North, to accept this on behalf of Tapalti. Ladies and gentlemen, our third award tonight the Best Innovative Agricultural Products Company Excellence Award. This is being presented to, please put your hands together for Fatma Fertilizers. May we request Mr. Ali Mukhtar, the Chief Executive Officer, to please accept this. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, the best and the most successful glass manufacturer of Pakistan. This award goes to Ghani Glass. May we request Mr. Anwar Ghani, the CEO, to please accept this. Ladies and gentlemen, our next category, the best real estate project company of the year. And we are proud to present it to the Lake City. May we request Mr. Sultan Gohar, the CEO of Lake City, to please accept this. When it comes to economy, reality is all about perception. And of course, the media houses have an important responsibility. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, the most successful news channel network excellence award. This is being presented to the Geo Television Network. May we request Mr. Azhar Abbas, the managing director, to please accept this. Ladies and gentlemen, education is going to bring about the much needed change in transformation. Our next award, the best educational network of the country, being presented to the Punjab Group. May we request Mr. Mia Amir Mahmood, the Chief Executive Officer, to please accept this. Ladies and gentlemen, our next category, the Best Conventional Bank of the Year Excellence Award. This is being presented to the first commercial bank to be established in Pakistan in 1947 and one of the largest institutions we have. Please put your hands together for HBL. May we request Mr. Mohammad Nasser Saleem, the President and CEO of HBL, to accept this. Ladies and gentlemen, our next recipient is the only lady recipient of the evening. The best emerging fashion designer it goes to The Bell. May I request Ms. Safina Yahya, the creative director of The Bell, to please accept this. Ladies and gentlemen, the next category is the best bulk terminal company of the year, and the award goes to Pakistan International Bulk Terminal. May we request Mr. Sharik A. Siddiqui, the Chief Executive Officer, to please accept this. Mm -hmm. 
Ladies and gentlemen, our next category, the best oil refinery company of the year. And the award is being presented to what is known as the national energy lifeline of the country, Park Arab Refinery Limited, Parco. Please uh, request Mr. Irtiza Ali Qureshi, the managing director, to please accept this. Parco has recently completed 50 years of operations in Pakistan, the Golden Jubilee year, again gets another acknowledgement by FPCCI. <laughs> Next up, ladies and gentlemen, the category is Best Container Terminal Company of the Year Excellence Award. This is being presented to DP World. May we request Mr. Junaid Zamir, the Chief Executive Officer of DP World, to please accept this. Ladies and gentlemen, our next category, the Best Petroleum Company of the Year Excellence Award, and we are proud to present it to the Pakistan Petroleum Limited. May we request Brigadier Said Mahmoudul Hassan, retired General Manager, Shared Services, to please accept this. Ladies and gentlemen, the next category, the best battery manufacturer company of the year, and this is being presented to ACM High Tech Engineering Private Limited. May we request Mr. Muhammad Mustafa bin Talha, the Chief Executive Officer, to please accept this. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, the best cooking and vegetable oil company of the year, and this is being presented to Ahmed Oil and Ghee Industries Limited. May we request Mr. Umar Khan and Mr. Muhammad Khan, the directors of the organization, to please accept this. <laughs> Ahmed Oil and Ghee Industries Limited, the best oil and ghee manufacturers of the year. Our next category is, ladies and gentlemen, the best electric fan company of the year. And this is being presented to the SGS Electrical Company, also known as the Khurshid Fans. May we request Mr. Mia Ghulamu Yuddin, the Chief Executive Officer, to please accept this. Ladies and gentlemen, the wheel is often lauded as one of the most Im important inventions of mankind. Our next category, the best rubber tire brand company of the year, Excellence Award. And this is being presented to the Panther Tires Limited. May I request Mr. Mia Faisal Iftikhar, the Chief Executive Officer, to please accept this. Ladies and gentlemen, our next category, the best financial and equity management company of the year, and this is being presented to the Arif Habib Limited. May we request Mr. Shahid Ali Habib, the Chief Executive Officer, to please accept this. Ladies and gentlemen, moving on to our next category, the best international freight forwarding, warehousing, supply chain, and logistics company of the year, Excellence Award. And this is being presented to Dynamic Worldwide Logistics Group. May I request Mr. Tariq Mehmood Chaudhry, the group CEO and chairman, to please accept this. Ladies and gentlemen, our next category, the best pharmaceuticals and healthcare company of the year, Excellence Award. This is being presented to the Genetics Pharmaceuticals Private Limited. May we request Mr. Ah Amir Kayyum, the Chief Executive Officer, to please accept this. May I request Mr. Shaquille Ahmed Sheikh, the CEO of Shore Biodiagnostics and Pharmaceuticals to accept this on behalf of the organization.
Next up, ladies and gentlemen, may we request the next award to be accepted by, uh, this is the best ghee brand company of the year. This is being presented to the Hafiz Iqbal Oil and Ghee Industries Limited. May I request Mr. Arham Ikram, the director of the organization, to please accept this. Ladies and gentlemen, our next category, the Best Medical Devices and Diagnostics Company of the Year Award, an important one for our healthcare ecosystem. This is being presented to the Shore Biodiagnostics and Pharmaceuticals. May I request Mr. Muhammad Saqib Rafiq Sheikh, the director of the organization, to please accept this. And now, ladies and gentlemen, may we present our next award to an Academic Excellence Award. This is for the best university in international ranking of the year. May, we, may I request, uh, this is being presented to Sakhar IBA University. May I request Professor Dr. Asif Ahmed Sheikh, the Vice Chancellor of Sakhar IBA, to please accept this. Best Pakistani University to be rising in the ranks of international ranking, Sakhar IBA University. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the next award is the category of the best private social sector university of the year excellence award. And this is being presented to UMT, the University of Management and Technology. May I request the president of UMT, Mr. Ibrahim Murad, to accept this. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the best customs clearing and forwarding agent of the year excellence award, and this is being presented to El Frico. May I request the managing partner, Mr. Mohammad Javed Mesia, to please accept this. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to move on to five distinguished stalwarts who are being presented with Lifetime Achievement Awards. For this, may I request Dr. Gohar Ejaz, the chairman of FECCI Think Tank, to please come and take over. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. میرا ایک امان ہے کہ وہ قوم ترقی کرتی ہے جو اپنے ہیروز کو یاد رکھتی ہے اور جو اپنے ہیروز کی عزت کرتی ہے آج فیڈریشن آف پاکستان چیمبر آف کامرس انڈسٹری اسی نیت کے ساتھ اسی جذبے کے ساتھ کھڑے ہو کے اپنے لیڈرز کو آج سلام پیش کر رہی ہے ایسے منیر صاحب آج ہمارے میں نہیں ہیں انہوں نے اپنی زندگی کے پینتیس سال صرف بزنس کمیونٹی کی سروس میں جو ہے وہ گزارے ہم سب اس بات کا گواہ ہیں ہم صرف ان کو کام کہتے تھے تو اس کے بعد ہمیں خود تنگ ہو جاتے تھے کہ صبح آٹھ بجے سے لے کے رات دس بجے تک ان کا فون آتا رہتا تھا کہ تمہارا کام کہاں پہنچا وی آر پراؤڈ ٹو پرزینٹ لیجنڈ آف دا بزنس کمیونٹی ایوارڈ ٹو مسٹر ایس ایم منیر اینڈ آئی ریکویسٹ ہز برادر ایس ایم پرویز ٹو پلیز کام آن دا اسٹیج اینڈ ہز سن ایس ایم تنویر ہمارے پاکستان میں ہمارے جو بزرگ بزنس کمیونٹی میں موجود ہیں ہمیں اس بات پہ فخر ہے کہ بشیر جان احمد صاحب آج بھی ہمارے کو اسی طرح لیڈ کر رہے ہیں جیسے آج سے پچاس سال پہلے لیڈ کر رہے تھے بشیر جان احمد صاحب چیئرمین ڈالڈا پاکستان کی بزنس کمیونٹی کی روح 
ہم آج آپ کو خراج تحصیل پیش کرتے ہوئے اگین لیجنڈ آف بزنس کمیونٹی کا ایوارڈ پیش کرتے ہیں ہمارے خیبر پرختونخواہ میں اگر میں ایک بزنس لیڈر کو چنوں جس نے اپنی پوری زندگی بزنس کمیونٹی کی خدمت میں گزاری ہے تو میں صرف ایک نام لوں گا سینیٹر الیاس پلور کا آج سینیٹر الیاس پلور وینٹیلیٹر پہ ہیں لیکن شاید وینٹیلیٹر پہ جانے سے پہلے بھی انہوں نے یہ پوچھا ہے کہ بزنس کمیونٹی کے جو مسائل ہیں وہ مسائل کو میں لیڈ کروں گا اور میرا سلام پریزنٹ صاحب کو دینا یہ ان کا وینٹیلیٹر پہ جانے سے پہلے کا پیغام تھا میں آج دعوت دیتا ہوں سینیٹر الیاس پلور کے بحاب پہ ایوارڈ ریسیف کریں اگر میں سیال کوٹ پہ آؤں تو سیال کوٹ میں پچھلے چالیس سال سے آج چالیس سال سے جو ہے وہ سیال کوٹ چیمبر سیال کوٹ کی تمام بزنس کمیونٹی کو جو ہے وہ لے کے چلنے والے شیخ ریاض صاحب آج شیخ صاحب جو ہے وہ ہمارے درمیان ہیں ہمیں لیڈ کر رہے ہیں میں ان کے بحاف پہ آج لیجنڈ آف بزنس کمیونٹی کا وارڈ ان کی فیملی کو پیش کرتا ہوں پلیز آ کے ایکسپٹ کریں زکی لاہور کی بزنس کمیونٹی کی بات کریں تو صرف ایک نام آتا ہے افتخار ملک صاحب کا افتخار ملک صاحب نے اگین پچھلے پچاس سال اپنی زندگی کے دیئے بزنس کمیونٹی کی خدمت کی آج ان کے فاملی کو ہم لیجنڈ آف بزنس کمیونٹی کا وارڈ ان کے بیٹے ریسیف کر رہے ہیں ملک افتخار Thank you, Mr. President, for honoring us and giving us so much respect and honor. Ladies and gentlemen, the first, the Maiden Excellence Awards of FBCCI, and now the moment we've all been waiting for, may we request the Honorable Chief Guest, the President of Islamic Republic of Pakistan, to address this August gathering. بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم پریزیڈنٹ فیڈریشن آف پاکستان چیمبرز آف کامرس اور انڈسٹریز مستر آتف اکرم شیخ صاحب گروپ لیڈرز ایف پی سی سی آئی ڈاکٹر گوھر اجاز ڈسٹنگوش گیس لیڈیز ان جنٹلمن السلام علیکم ناو لیٹس ٹاک بزنس تقریر چھوڑیں دندے کی بات کریں It will only be a fool who will think that he can give, we can give you electricity at X rate, give you interest at 22% uh, percent, and expect you to even hold on to your industries. So I totally agree with Gaurajas. This should be brought back. I will try with the government. I can only ask them. 
But no, nowhere in the world, last time around when I was president, Gore and myself sat down and brought it down to what, 7 percent? 9 percent. To 9 percent. In a one-day discussion, I called the finance minister, finance secretary, um, the chairman of the state bank, everybody, and we decided. I said, this is it. It's a utrani but I didn't agree with them. Basically, they represent some people who happen to be taking in your currency, making money over it, and then not even giving you returns. So this is a whole game, and games are played in every part of the world. I can't say that this game is only played in Pakistan. All the wars of the world are games. All the things that are happening in the world are games. Basically, it's in, uh, one kind of industry to, against the second kind of industry, and the third kind of industry, and the casualty is humanity. But nobody bothers. Humanity is the least thought of, spoken of. And as far as Pakistan is concerned, when we first came in with Gaur Sahib and everybody, I told them then, our stock exchange was at 9,000. People didn't understand what it means to have this stock exchange and have it there. Abhi, you were telling me that somebody lodged his stocks and they were oversurprised by 20, 20 times. So this is the route I want all of you to take. This is the route I want the uh, Gujarat fans to take. I want to have a spe specific meeting with them. We want to do financing for you from SIN. We'll give you cheap electricity, cheap, no cost land, and we give you only everything you need without any interest or without anything because I know the potential you have for A, my stock tomorrow, B, your export, C, the amount of people you will employ because this is a manual job. Most of these things are given to smaller farmers of industries which are making them at home and making sure that they get to you. So I'm looking for these kind of industries to overrate my humanity, to bring up my people and give them more to circulate. If they have more in their pockets, the more they will spend. And the more they spend, that comes into circulation. Running a country is not like running a business. It's totally different. We have to think of all sorts of things and all the ways to make sure that you all can do better for yourself so it's better for me. More taxes, more everything. I can spend on the provinces, I can spend on the federation. Only if business is doing well, if the business is shut, agar Festa baat ki did so industry band padi hai. To last time around, <clears throat> Bakaida jagra ho raha tha with my party in Punjab because everybody was abusing us. We were giving Festa baat electricity a little less cost and totally we wouldn't break it. There will be no breakage. There would be no stoppage of electricity. And people started taking advantage of me politically trying to say I am purposefully um, giving an advantage to the Faisalabad industries. I was. But my interest was export. And sure enough, in our times, in five years, four years, where things were bad, there was war in the borders, I did SWAT, I did all sorts of actions of Afghanistan, we had all sorts of problems going on. 
And in spite of that, our exports increased twice at least, at least if not more. In that four years, four and a half years, because last four and a half years, so you know, you're going and somebody else is coming, so the bureaucracy re remembers and starts working in a different manner. So sure enough, but I want you to adopt your own stock exchange. Wherever I can help you, why not? I'll help you. I will give you hydro energy, which is cost-free, practically cost-free. So let's sit, let's talk, and let's get up to business. Let's take up four, five industries and just take them as our lead industries and help them help ourselves. So thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for keeping this <coughs> honorable ceremony here. Very kind of you. Our people say that So you are my Alhamdulillah. Very kind of you. Thank you. Pakistan, Pahindabad. صدر آسیف علی زرداری وفاق ایوان حائے صنعت و تجارت کی بارویں ایکسلنس ایوارڈز کی تقریب سے خطاب کر رہے تھے انہوں نے کہا کہ دنیا میں ترقی یافتہ ممالک کی فہرست میں شامل ہونے کے لیے ہمیں ان لوگوں کی حوصلہ افزائی کرنے کی ضرورت ہے جو کہ ملکی ترقی میں اپنا حصہ ڈال رہے ہیں محنت کر رہے ہیں حکومت ملکی معاشی ترقی کے لیے دن رات کوشاں ہے معاشی ترقی کے لیے تاجر برادری کا کردار نہایت اہم ہے ہمیں ملک میں ایسی صنعتوں کے فروغ کی ضرورت ہے جو کہ لوگوں کو خوش حال بنا سکیں صدر آصف علی زرداری وفاق ایوان حائے صنعت و تجارت کی بارہویں ایکسلنٹ ایوارڈز کی تقریب سے خطاب کر رہے تھے ان کا یہ کہنا تھا کہ حکومت ملکی معاشی ترقی کے لیے کوشاں ہے صدر آصف علی زرداری کا یہ بھی کہنا تھا کہ دنیا میں ترقی یافتہ ممالک کی فہرست میں شامل ہونے کے لیے ہمیں ایسے لوگوں کی ایسے اذہان کی حوصلہ افزائی کرنے کی ضرورت ہے جو کہ ملکی ترقی میں اپنا حصہ ڈال رہے ہیں محنت کر رہے ہیں پی ٹی وی نیوز سے فی الوقت اتنا ہی